Hello everyone, welcome back to PTech Chemistry channel. So in this tutorial video, I'll cover uh, cover making a stock solution. So this is an example of a solid called ammonium nitrate. So there's NH4, NO3, NH4 plus, NO3 minus. So if you look inside, it's a crystalline white solid. As you expect from a, a substance, there's a giant ionic structure, so they are pretty crystalline solid. Um, if we want to make a stock solution, so we're going to go from the solid itself to a solution. I'm going to make it up to 250 cm cube. So this is a 250 milliliter, 250 cm cube volumetric flask. It's got a blue mark here that actually indicates it measuring up to 250 cm cube. It's got a stopper because we are going to shake the volumetric flask in order to get a uniform concentration later on. So what we're going to do is, uh, I have to weigh out a specific amount of solid uh, with a mass balance. So if you need a mass, you need to use a mass balance. So this is an example of a mass balance that I'll use. It's a portable mass balance that you will probably find in the kitchen anyway. Uh, however, it's not a very accurate mass balance. You only measure up to one decimal place. So obviously, like if you want a better apparatus, they can measure to a greater accuracy, but it will cost a lot more money, uh, such as the apparatus there. Okay, but for the sake of convenience, I'll just use this uh, measuring, sorry, this mass balance in order to measure the mass uh, of whatever I need. So uh, we're going, we are going to have to do a little bit of calculation uh, in order to work out what is the mass of this ammonium nitrate that we need in order to. Uh, get to a specific concentration that we want to make. So concentration is of solution. Solution means something dissolved in water. This is a pure solid, it's a compound, but once we dissolve it in water, we're going to get a solution, which is a mixture, and it has a concentration in mole per dm cube, meaning mole of the substance dissolve in one dm cube of the solution. Now, there's the unit, however, we are not going to make it up to 1 dm cube, which is 1000 milliliter or 1000 cm cube. Instead, I'm just going to make it up to 250 ml because I'll have a use for this ammonium nitrate uh, uh, well, as a practice for making stock solution as well as for using it for qualitative analysis in another tutorial video. Um, so, what do we need? We need 0 0.10 more per dm cube. NH4 of NO3. So if you look at this is our target. Have a look at how I've how I've used 0 0.10. Okay, there's a difference between 0 0.10, 0 0.100, and 0 0.1 more per dm cube, and it all comes down to level of accuracy. And how accurate your concentration is going to be depends on how accurate is the apparatus they are using that you're using. So for example, our mass balance only measure to one decimal place. So it's impossible to get a high level accuracy like this three significant figure here. What I'll be thinking about really is probably at best 0.1 or 0.10 more per dm cube concentration. Even though this is a pretty accurate apparatus, so it's got a error accuracy. If you read the volumetric flask, all apparatus has this thing called error accuracy, plus minus something. Even though this is quite accurate apparatus, but to get to the stock solution, you actually, you're actually using other uh, apparatus as well, and other apparatus will have their own uh, percentage error, such as this mass balance, only measure up to one decimal place, so it's not the most accurate mass balance in the world. Anyway, it's more about the practice and what you will do in reality to make up a stock solution. So this is not just applicable to um, uh, alternative to practical in an all-level setting like paper 4 or IGCSE alternative to practical, uh, but it's also very important in um, experimental planning and design uh, as well as analysis and evaluation paper in a level paper 4 because there always is always a, a fixed essay kind of question. Uh, asking you to make a stock solution from the solid itself. Okay, so if you're a level student, you would know exactly what I'm talking about, making a stock solution. So let's say if this is our target, we need to work out the molecular mass of ammonium nitrate. So you can have a periodic table 
which of course in a paper five or in a practical or in an alternative to practical, uh, you will have been given the relative atomic mass. So NH4 NO3 is 14 plus 4 times 1 for hydrogen. And then you have 14 times 1 for 1 nitrogen and then 16 times 3. So you add all of them up, you get 80. So that is that is the mass. 80 is the mass for one mole of the substance. So the unit by right is actually gram per mole. So um, remember that if I draw a simple diagram, this is what we are going to get. Hang on, it's not as easy if I'm not having it on my iPad screen. So draw a simple diagram. You have a solid that you're gonna add in distilled water. So we use distilled water to add out to 250 cm cube using this 250 cm cube or 250 ml volumetric flask. This is called volumetric flask. It's a piece of specialized instrument. It's specialized apparatus. We're going to have to use distilled water and not tap water. Okay, distilled water is also known as deionized water, and you need to make the distinction that is distilled or deionized in your uh, process, in your explanation, because distilled water or deionized water means they have no dissolved ions. No dissolved ions because you do not want you do not want any other dissolved ions to interfere with what is supposed to be present in the solution, which is just ammonium ion and nitrate ion. If you use tap water. It contains dissolved ions and they can well they can introduce impurities and you don't want impurities in what you call stock solution which is the bulk of the solution that you're going to test later on or whatever you're going to do later on okay so I just use ammonium nitrate as an example but of course it can be any kind of um, uh, pure compound that you can make a solution provided it is soluble in water of course, all ammonium salts are soluble in water. All nitrate salts are also soluble in water. That's the reason why I choose it. Okay. So going, going to this simple diagram that I've got here. So hopefully you can see, I am just adding water. I'm not taking away anything. I'm not adding anything. I'm just adding water from the solid to the solution. So the mole here is equal to the mole there. This is mole of solution. This is mole of solid. So the mole of the solid equal to the mole of the solution. So that's the first thing you should be able to do. At this point, you can just pause the video and you can um, try to work out what is the mass required. So the mass of the solid required divided by the MR, which is 80, is equal to the concentration that I want to make, which is 0.1 mole per dm cube. And I'm making it up to 250 cm cube. So if we are making it to 250 cm cube, this is what we have. We have 250 over 1000, or 250 times 10 to the minus 3, oops, dm cube. Alright, and then we have that multiplied by the concentration that we want, which is the mole of the solution. Then the mole of the solid is just the mass over the MR. Okay, okay. so you can do your uh, working and work out the mass of the solid by moving the 80 on top to the top there and you get to multiply them together so 80 multiplied by 0.1 multiplied by 250 times 10 to the minus 3 I get 2 grams this is shown on my calculator as a whole number 2 my mass balance actually measured to one decimal place so I would be wise to put it to point well one decimal place because it follows the accuracy of the mass balance I'm using, which happens to be one decimal place. So the first thing to making a stock solution is, what is the concentration you want? What is the mass of the solid that you need to weigh? Okay, so you need to weigh the solid using the mass balance. And that is exactly what I'm gonna do here. So I've got a piece of paper, I have folded it to make it into a weighing pot. I put it uh, so this has a wall on the side so that when you weigh the solid, the solid doesn't, you know, tip over or anything. There is a bit of mass with the paper on top of the balance, so I need to uh, press zero, it. so it's called zero reading, so that it takes away the mass of the paper or what the weighing board or whatever you use, so that it starts from zero point zero, and whatever mass that you measure later on will be whatever you're needing, whatever you need, okay? So I needed 2 gram. Because 
because these are crystalline, they are so it's one point two so far. So beautiful, beautiful crystals here. So I've got two point one there. I just need to take away a little bit. Two. I mean, it's a one decimal place, mass balance. I mean, it's not going to be the world most accurate thing to begin with. Um, but I hope you get the drift. Therefore, for better results, for better accuracy, you should have used mass balance uh, to two decimal place, you know, to improve the to improve the percentage uh, accuracy as well as to reduce the error in this experiment, you should really use um, uh, well, a better apparatus, something that can measure to more decimal place. So, I don't know if it is clear or not. Um, let me see if I can zoom it in. Okay, so there's 2.0 there. Anyway, let's zoom out and then back to me again. So what I'll do is, I'll have to dissolve it first. So the first thing you do after you weigh is you do not you do not put the solid straight into volumetric flask because what happens when you tip the solid in is solid can fall over. Uh, uh, when you tip it over, the solid can be stuck on the side and that's quite bad. The solid can tip over outside and that's quite bad because what you measure, you want all of this to go in here. If you see our simple diagram, you want all of this to go into here. That's why you can equate them all like this. So I'll grab a beaker, I'll grab a clean beaker, these are not the cleanest beaker, which is why I'm going to wash with distilled water. Okay, so I just washed my beaker with distilled water, so this beaker is a bit wet, but it's okay. I'm going to put all the solid into the beaker. And then because I'm making it up to 250 cm cube, because I'm making it up to 250 cm cube or 250 ml, uh, this volumetric flask looks clean, should be alright. Um, so what happened there is I should really try and dissolve it not in 250 cm cube. First of all, I must try and dissolve it in a uh, maybe 50 cm cube or 100 cm cube because I'm gonna pour this solution where I fully dissolve it into the volumetric flask in a little bit. Okay. So I was going to say I use spatula to weigh out the solid, but I should then stir with a metal on glass. What you should do is you should use a proper glass rod to stir because metal on glass is very likely uh, going to cause the glass to break, whereas glass rod is meant for stirring. Okay. So we know all ammonium salt is soluble in water. We know all nitrate is soluble in water. And as you see, they are pretty much dissolved now, okay? And that is just in about lesser than 25, lesser than 25 um, ml of water, okay? So this reaction is endothermic because when I feel it, I feel that the water is actually getting cooler than the room temperature. So the, the, the dissolving, dissolving ammonium nitrate in water, it takes energy away from the surrounding because the system absorbs heat energy from the surrounding, so this reaction is actually endothermic. So making sure that all the solid in there dissolve in not more than um, whatever volume that you're gonna fill it up to. So beaker has that spot at the end that you can pour, pour directly into the volumetric flask. So pour it on the table level so that you don't spill anything and be gentle. It's better to be slow because once you spill something outside, that means you're not getting all of the ammonium nitrate into the into the volumetric flask. What you do next is very important. You still have a bit of ammonium nitrate in there. You might not see it. It's important that you wash. You do washing and you wash with deionized or distilled water. And again, and use a flask to stir. And then you come 
bind the washings, you transfer the washings uh, into the volumetric flask. I wash once and I wash a second time. So I spill some water outside, but there's just water spilling outside. I did not spill whatever is inside outside, and that's all good. So I think washing twice should be all right because I don't have any more solids. Okay, I already washed enough. This is still way below the 250 mil. So what I'm going to do that is I'm going to add distilled water and then I'm going to add distilled water by swirling it on the side so that I'm washing whatever uh, solution is being left behind. That shouldn't matter that much because later on you're going to shake the whole volumetric flask so that you get a uniform concentration. At this stage, if I just press on the distilled water, it actually takes quite long. What I'm going to do is I can open the distilled water bottle and I can just pour directly but be very careful towards the end you do not want to pour directly because once you overshoot the 250 mil mark there's no turning back okay so just like end point in the titration you need to be careful towards the end so this is this is the ending line this is where I am now so I can keep on adding as long as I'm careful but remember that human reaction time is still slow okay even though uh, you think you're fast but it's still a bit slow okay so this is probably as close as I'll get and then I needed to make it out to this line so what I need really is I should use a, a dropping pipette a dropping pipette or dropper in order to add the water towards the end so that I can get exactly the meniscus level will be exactly 250 mil rather than me doing you know squirting bit by bit and then I'll risk overshooting once I overshoot it, there's no point of me taking out the water anymore because once you overshoot it, you already make it less concentrated than what it's supposed to be, than what you have collected, okay? And obviously now you haven't made it up to the mark, so it is not to the concentration yet. So I need to go and find a dropping pipette or one of those glass dropper. And I'm back, okay. So um, we have this, well, it's kind of glass, boron silicate kind of uh, glass pipette. So these are typically present in the, in the bench reagents. Uh, so I'm not going to use this. Uh, instead, I can also use one of these plastic pipettes. Uh, what I can do is these are clean. You can just get the distilled water directly. And what I'll do is your, your this one should be on the table level and I will add it. Like I said, it should be on the table level, but I still haven't added to the end yet. Okay, getting there, getting there. So I'll leave it on the table. So make sure your eye is meniscus level. Okay. So sometimes questions can ask you why why you should be careful, why you should add drop by drop towards the end, because well you do not want to overshoot, you do not want to overshoot the volumetric flask mark because once you overshoot it, your previous calculation based on these uh, simple ideas, once you overshoot 250 CMQ mark, then the mold will not be the same. If you don't get it up to 250, then your mold will not be the same. Okay, just now, why was it important to wash? If you don't wash the beaker, you might still have some of the residual solid in the beaker that, that I used to dissolve the solution initially before transferring to the volumetric flask and that means if not all of this goes in here the mold is not the same all right our calculation was based on the idea that all of the solid goes into the volumetric flask so i just added water to the solution that i made out at the bottom just now so the uniform sorry the concentration is not uniform yet i put a stopper this is a plastic stopper on top of the volumetric flask it should sit uh, snug, it should, it should sit quite nicely, uh, but plus stay on glass. So when I, when I want to get a uniform concentration, after I make it up to the 250 CNQ mark with distilled water, I need to shake. Well, I need to stop it first, and then I shake. And the reason for shaking is to mix, to mix the solution well, to get a uniform concentration. So just like when you make up a, uh, when you take a syrup and you add water, you want to stir the syrup solution so that, well, wherever you drink from the solution, it tastes sweet. So wherever you take the solution now, they all have the same concentration. 
So this is how you make a stock solution. Just to summarize, you need to work out, are you starting from the solid or are you starting from a solution? So in the next tutorial video, I'll go through uh, diluting a solution. Dilution of a concentrated solution into less concentrated solution is also using volumetric flask. But we are not going to start from solid. We will have to start from, let's say, a more concentrated acid or a more concentrated solution. There's a third form of dilution. It's called serial dilution. And I'll cover that in another tutorial video as well. So this is uh, making a stock solution from the solid itself. First of all, we need to work out how much of the solid we need in order to get to that specific concentration. Do the calculation involving your molecular mass, involving the concentration that you need, and uh, thinking about a simple diagram like this. Okay? And then you weigh the solid on the mass balance. You dissolve it in a beaker with deionized or distilled water uh, with a lesser volume. If you make it out of 250 cm cube, so you can dissolve it initially in like 50 cm cube or 100 cm cube. So stir to mix well, transfer that into the 250 ml volumetric flask. If you're making out of 250, we transfer it to whatever uh, capacity of the volumetric flask that you're using to make it up to your desired uh, uh, volume, depending on whatever you have calculated previously. Then we have to add distilled water or deionized water to make it up to the mark. And then we have to shake, we have to stopper, and then we have to shake in order to mix well. Right? So that's it in this tutorial video, and I'll see you in the next tutorial video. Don't forget to click on the bottom right to subscribe to the channel, and uh, follow me at ptt.chemistry, that is ptt.chemistry on IG, Facebook, and Twitter if you use this social media platform. Alright, so see you in the next video. Thank you for watching.